All right, so in this example, we're going to go ahead and um, use the graph given and, and such that it's the base of an object. And we're going to find the volume using cross sections to be semicircles. So their diameters are on the base. So first off, let's go ahead and take a look at the graph. So the first thing we do see is this line where the y-intercept is at zero. And at x equals 3, it does ha stop and change, right? This is x equal 3. Where now the line, which now no longer has a slope, but it's a constant function at y equal 2. So let's go ahead and mark y equal 2. And then this line, again, the y-intercept is at 0. And I can see that the slope is going to be 1, 2, up 2, over 3. So up 2 over 3. So that's the equation of a line with a y-intercept of 0. So now we're going to have, we can see we're going to have two parts here. Now our cross section are semicircles. So what will be interesting here, if I just take it right here, right? And there is the semicircle, okay? And we can see that the thickness is going to be delta x or dx, right? However you want to write it, that's the thickness. But then the semicircle, the diameter lies right there in being symmetric about the x-axis. So we can see that the radius will be from that point from the x-axis to that line, right? Okay, and this will change, right? As I, let's say I do it right here, some, some arbitrary x, there's the diameter, there's the semicircle. Again, delta x, the thickness will always stay, stay constant, right? That's the same thickness all the way through. However, when I get to the right of 3 and I start drawing my semicircles, I see now that no matter what, the radius will stay the same. In fact, the radius will stay 2 no matter where I draw my semicircle. So I'm drawing just a couple, not drawn to scale, of course, because they don't look like semicircles. They look like Ds. There we go. So you can see a little bit of thickness there. Okay. And again, the radius is going to be from the x-axis to the curve. Now, what's nice about this is that it will stay constant. So that radius on this side will stay 2 all the way through. However, on the left of 3, or x equal 3, we see that the radius is still from the x-axis to the curve, but will change according to this line. Okay, well, we do know the area of a semicircle. It's pi r squared in half, right? So 1 half pi r squared. What's nice about this, the area of this entire semicircle is this. So I'm not just taking half of it and then having it reflect this. What's nice about the semicircle formula is whatever semicircle I'm taking, this formula here gives me the entire area of it, which is nice. Okay, so let's go ahead and set that up. Let's take a, let's first, one I, let's go ahead and the, take the area of the cross section. Okay, so the area of the cross section when x is less than 3, and of course larger than 0, <laughs> is equal to 1 half pi, and then the radius squared. So we can see that the radius here is going to be from that x-axis up into that line, right? Okay, so 2 thirds x. And that will give us the entire area of the semicircle. Okay, but now when we look at when x when x is to the x is to the right of three, right, but stops at six, right, that is equal to again one half pi. We're doing still doing semicircles and the radius squared. Well, what's interesting about this radius is again it's a constant function, y equal two. So from the x-axis 
to the curve, right? It, well, it's just going to be two the entire time. It doesn't matter where I draw it. So it's going to be two and then squared. So if I wanted to simplify this a little bit, I would get one half pi times four ninths x squared. And down below, I would get one half pi times two squared, which is four. So if I just simplified this a little bit, right, I would get two ninths pi on the top one, x squared. And then for the one that's to the right of three, I would get, um, again, this two and four would reduce out, and we are left with um, two pi. Great, so now the next step is to build your volume. Remember, volume is a three-dimensional multiplication, right? Or area times the base, right? In this case, notice that our areas we have for each piece and then our thickness of each of our slices, which is delta x, so dx. So we're ready to set up the volume. So now let's go ahead and set up the volume. Okay. So the volume is going to be equal to the first piece here from 0 to 3 of the area of the cross section, which would be 2 ninths pi x squared dx plus the integral of the one from the right of 3, which is 3 to 6 of, again, our area of our cross-section, 2 pi dx. Okay, so th we know this is simple integration, um, a multi mul constant multiple rule, 2 ninths pi, and then um, the antiderivative of x squared is x cubed over 3, so we'll have times x cubed over 3 evaluated from 0 to 3 plus 2 pi, constant multiple rule, and then that property. So we'll have 6 minus 3 over here. Okay, what I'm going to go ahead and do is kick this 1 third out and get 2 27ths pi, and then times evaluating the um, limits of integration, we'll get 3 cubed minus 0 cubed plus 2 pi times 3. So at this point, we're going to get 2 over 27 pi times 3 cubed and then plus 6 pi. Okay, well, right away, um, I don't even have to bring out my calculator, which I usually do, but I can see right away that 3 cubed is 27 and the 27 is going to reduce out from that to that denominator. So we actually end up getting just 2 pi plus 6 pi. And that's going to be 8 pi. And then cubic units. And if I go up here to the original problem, I can see that that is definitely correct. So really what you need to do is just identify the area of the cross section and the limits of integration, and then you can set up your volume. And then we can go ahead and box this.